to make sure that's silent. All right. Hello and welcome to the select board meeting. Today is March 17, 2020. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. We're airing on, chan um, on channels Verizon 33 and Comcast 22. Um, I'd like to welcome our newest members to the select board. We have Carlo Bacci here in the room with us and Karen Herrick, uh, who is joining us remote. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you both on a successful campaign. And thank you. I look forward to working with both of you. Same as well, thank uh, you. Um, before we dive into tonight's meeting, I wanted to say a few words um, about what our community and the world is experiencing uh, in regards to the coronavirus. Um, while we sit in our living rooms watching the news or seeing the headlines from our phones regarding coronavirus, we know we are living through unsettling times. And with warm weather just around the corner, uh, it may be difficult to fathom remaining physically separated from our friends and neighbors. Um, however, we know that the best way for us to care for and support our neighbors, particularly our most vulnerable residents, uh, is to engage in social distancing, um, refraining from any unnecessary gatherings or contact within six feet of others not within our immediate family. Um, we take pride that Reading is taking the necessary steps to keep our community safe from the coronavirus. Uh, the short-term measures being implemented will alleviate uh, the burden on our health care system, which is not well equipped to handle uh, a serious outbreak. Um, these measures will decrease the likelihood of our parents and grandparents becoming ill. Uh, if we follow the best practices detailed by our own Board of Health, um, we will help in the broader efforts to curtail the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, in regards to local government meetings and how they'll be affected, um, following the guidance of Governor Baker and our local emergency response team um, to limit the spread of coronavirus, the town of Reading will be instituting the following measures for public meetings effective immediately. Uh, effective today, as you may have seen in the town manager's press release, the town hall is closed to the public through March 27th. Uh, the town manager will provide additional details uh, should you need to access town services. Um, what this means is that the majority of evening meetings will be on hiatus, with the exception being the Finance Committee meeting tomorrow. Uh, please do remember that the building is closed to the public, uh, however you can watch that on RCTV. Um, during this time where the building is closed, uh, the, t the staff uh, will be focusing on local emergency response efforts. Um, they will also be using this time to determine how best to hold public meetings, uh, utilizing teleconferencing to connect members and engage and broadcast to the public. Um, for town meeting in April, our town moderator, Alan Folds, is here with us tonight, and he will provide an update on, on the status of town meeting um, at that point. Um, we appreciate your patience and understanding while we prioritize this health situation facing the nation. We will resume local government meetings as soon as we are safely able to do so. In the news and on social media, it is critical that we engage in social distancing for at least the next two to three weeks. Um, following guidelines issued by our local Board of Health, the state, and the CDC. This means no indoor or outdoor play dates, no social visits with friends or family, and limiting time spent in places where people gather or are high traffic. This will be a short-term inconvenience uh, for a much bigger social good. Although these measures may cause us to feel isolated, please know you are not alone. We are all neighbors, so let's look to each other for help and support. Um, if you need help or want to help those in need, uh, the town will be organizing efforts to connect those in need um, with those who are able to help. Um, please look to the town website as those efforts are under development at the time, at the moment. Um, we thank you for your participation um, with these measures and look forward to seeing you all in good spirits and good health soon. Um, Due to the coronavirus, uh, this meeting will run a little bit differently than, and a little bit more abbreviated than we have historically or what you may see in the packet. Um, we are intentionally seated far from each other in order to observe social distanciations. We also have Mark Doxer, Ann Landry, and Karen Herrick joining us remotely. We will not be having liaison reports in order to expedite the meeting, and if the building is closed to the public, we will not have public comment. Um, we will first begin with the town manager's report followed by an update by our town moderator, Alan Folds, on town, April town meeting, and then we'll go to the reorganization. Um, 
The first item on the agenda will be the reorganization, which is where we will vote for a new chair, vice chair, and secretary. As has historically been done, this portion of the meeting will be led by the town manager. Once the votes take place, the new chair will preside over the rest of the meeting. Um, and with that, Bob, I turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, first, a couple of housekeeping items that the board has asked me to address, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, COVID-19 response. Uh, first, uh, we've received a number of emails uh, wondering about what's going on with Daniel's house. And I can tell you that whatever was going on last Thursday or Friday has significantly changed over the weekend. We're living in a different world. Um, right now, the fairest I can say is there are no plans for the Daniel house, although the owner is certainly looking forward to doing something. Uh, the second is there's been half a dozen or so uh, email requests to give an update about the natural gas article at town meeting. Uh, two weeks ago, I met with uh, a National Grid representative who happens to live in Reading, and National Grid has agreed to replace the full main on Main Street from the tracks all the way down almost to 128. That's been our biggest issue of concern, ongoing concern in terms of natural gas leaks. It's a tremendous accomplishment. Um, that will leave much less work for this uh, town meeting authorized expense, which we still intend to do, but this was the priority. Um, all construction projects, as you may guess, are on hold. We don't know about the road diet. Um, we don't know when the gas uh, main will be replaced, uh, but they now must replace that by existing law uh, within a year, and they intend to do it this spring, um, concurrent with uh, the work on the road, and then the paving was to follow next fall. Um, but as we all can understand, it is a different world. Um, whatever plans we all had for last week are changed. So. We're adapting. Um, I'm in touch with our legislatures at all levels uh, pretty much daily, sometimes more than that. Um, our, our local leaders are doing a good job on Beacon Hill trying to respond to some of the urgent situations that we're faced with, uh, both financially and organizationally. Uh, town government is not set up to do nothing. There's something called constructive approval where people ask the town for permission, and if we don't respond within a certain amount of time, the permission is granted. So, for instance, that would be true about things like the Daniels House. Um, our legislators are working on changing that law, understanding that town halls should be closed, and we should not be responding to the public in a timely way right now. Um, the board has then asked me to read a couple of uh, statements, and I will uh, conclude by showing the community where we are. Uh, the first statement is, is from myself yesterday. Emergency management in Reading is coordinated using a format called Incident Command System, or ICS. It's an, it enables an effective incident management by integrating many components, people, resources, and many other things under a common framework. Reading employees are acknowledged to be on, among, among the best trained personnel in the state for such incidents. We've certainly had practice. For our response specifically to COVID-19 virus, we're operating under what is called a unified command. That's for a large incident. Members of the uh, command I've put on screen behind for anyone on TV. It includes myself, uh, Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director Ge Greg Burns, Board of Health Chair Emmy Dove, Police Chief David Clark, and Superintendent of Schools John Doherty. So those five are known as Unified Command. Um, all communication that goes out to the community goes through Unified Command to make sure there's a consistent message we have a liaison officer, Matt Cronellis. I'll circle back to that, but he will be a primary point of contact for a lot of the public efforts that Vanessa mentioned tonight. And we have a public information officer, Jane Wellman, and her job is to make sure communication flows uh, between all parties, of which I'll quickly describe next. Um, we have a planning section that has about a dozen employees, uh, town, uh, light department, and schools. We have an operations section with a little bit less people. We have a logistics section and a finance section. So it's a very complex structure. Um, any of you can think of 10 issues you want us to answer. And with this structure, we can point an issue right into where it belongs and get it done more effectively and efficiently. Uh, what the community and the board needs to understand is the volume of such requests and inquiries right now is large. Um, you know, again, you may have 10 things on your mind. There's 27,000 people that do also. So this structure is very formal. We're very well trained in it, not as practiced at this size, certainly, um, but we're well positioned to now respond. Um, Vanessa mentioned a couple of things, um, and I'll get to the goals that we set for the first week. 
All departments, town, school, especially, are to update their continuity of operations plans. Um, that just means what is the most important functions each department and division does, what's the frequency of it. So, for instance, 911, the frequency is you must respond within a minute. Other things can be done weekly, bi weekly, or monthly. Um, we also want to add a wrinkle, which we haven't done before, is which component can be done remotely outside of this building or where people normally work. Goal number two, restrict public access to buildings, and the Board of Health issued that last night or yesterday. They want to restrict access for two weeks and then reevaluate. That tasks us with developing an alternative communication for all or most of the functions we perform. So we are very able to do a lot of work remotely. We want to make sure to capture that in a single way to communicate to the community how, how to do that. And that ranges from anything from phone calls into the building to pay a bill, which happens all the time, to contractors that normally might come into the building to be issued a permit, um, they can do that electronically and online. So we'll, you will, the community will hear from us in an organized way within the next few days on how to interact with us. Number three, develop a plan to use volunteers to assist residents who need assistance. Plan needs to identify any tasks where a prior quarry check would be requested. So if it involves town employees formally um, and they're not quarry checked, they need to be in order to go into someone's house or deal with people one-on-one. -on -one. All of our recreation counselors would be, and so on and so forth. It's, if it's a volunteer effort, and a number of people have reached out to me willing to volunteer and to lead large volunteer organizations, which we tremendously appreciate, those people do not need to be quarry checked. But we will begin to match the uh, demands of residents, if you will, with the Office of Assistance, and that's really, really important. Number four, develop a communications plan for residents that will keep the public informed specifically on this virus. Make sure we reach as many residents as possible, including those who do not have access to a computer. So we've heard from a couple of people today that do not use a computer, and we want to make sure we uh, incorporate that. This plan will include code red or the community-wide telephone call, email, mass mailing to uh, those that receive pleasantries. We'll use the message board. We'll use town and school websites. RCTV has been great to work with as a partner. Uh, the school blackboard connect to parents is helpful. And then we're going to ask to meet with some of the local media, one of which is here tonight. Um, we want to make sure to, again, have a unified uh, message so that disparate parts of the organization do not contradict each other. And I'll just stop there and say, although the state has done a good job and no one could expect the magnitude of this, we have received com conflicting uh, advice from the state on some topics. So conflicting advice is something you really want to avoid. <clears throat> Number five, develop a schedule to clean and disinfect buildings. Anyone in the room tonight can probably tell it's just been cleaned. Um, a little bit longer term and looking back, number six, develop a plan to track overtime and expense cost related to this uh, virus. Where it has been declared a federal emergency, in the past we have been eligible for FEMA reimbursements in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, so we want to at least be keeping track of our expenses. And the last goal for this first week is to develop a human resource plan for each department to allow to perhaps alternate or vary the work week of, of employees. So for instance, we might be going to different shifts to have less employees in the building at the same time. Determine what actions can be done remotely and what functions cannot be done remotely. So that gives the community an idea of just what our first week's goals were, and we're about halfway through them. So the community should absolutely stay tuned. We'll be updating our social media. We'll be updating our Facebook page. <coughs> And we know that one of the most important goals is that number three, to match volunteers with residents who need assistance. And we have a pretty good uh, network to, to reach out and find those residents that need assistance, but we'll need to certainly get help from the community. I saw last night a new Facebook page had been created. It was uh, Reading Mass uh, COVID-19, I believe. Um, I was really impressed when I just looked through, and I, I'm not usually a social media creep, but I looked through last night and saw so many positive comments and residents reaching out to each other and saying they're running to the grocery store. Does anyone need anything? Um, that's what we need. That's what's going to get us through this, uh, no question. Um, the Board of Health is also uh, meeting daily as, as we are in that command group. Um, you saw a press release from them yesterday, another one uh, today. Uh, I'm not sure what their plans are for the rest of the week. 
uh, but we're going to make sure to have one place to go. If you go to our website, um, you know, you will easily find uh, there's a button on the lower left hand side that says uh, coronavirus. If you just go to that one location, we're going to have to reorganize it a bit because the volume of information is getting large. But that's the one place you can go. We'll point you to federal resources. We'll point you to state resources. Um, there is so much information coming into us and to residents, I'm sure, that that is one of the biggest challenges is to sort through the volume of information and then to try to determine not accurate. Uh, for instance, there's been some uh, technology with some of the links that have been sent out. So if you go to our uh, website and look at the, uh, the coronavirus tab, you'll find the information that you need. And the best location right now is the Massachusetts Department of Health webpage, which will be is, is linked on that page. So that's an update. Um, you'll, the board and the community will probably get updates almost every day from us. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so Alan? Like uh, why don't you stay right there? <laughs> the Governor General Court are working on emergency legislation to facilitate moving forward through this crisis. Today there is already a statute, Chapter 39, Section 10A, which gives the moderator the authority to adjourn the meeting, town meeting, for up to 30 days for safety reasons. The moderator must first consult with the select board and others. There are proposals being debated and being held even today, making a few changes to that. One is to make it clear that health-related issues are part of that. The author of that statute told me yesterday that his intention when he wrote it was to allow the postponement for weather-related issues, although it does say uh, public safety. So he's, he's also in favor of making sure that it's crystal clear that it applies to something like this as well. A second change is to assure that the moderator could call a second postponement of 30 days if the uh, 30 days doesn't prove sufficient. Town councils around the Commonwealth have differing, differing opinions on the legality of that. On March 12th, only five days ago, it feels like a lifetime, I posted a letter to town citizens spelling out this process, but said at the time that things are proceeding on a normal schedule for now. That's still true, but in light of the guidelines from both the state and the federal government, already a postponement seems far more likely. So far, those rules don't apply to a local legislative body, the town meeting, but that provision doesn't make it any less safe. One town that I know of, Manchester by the Sea, has decided to postpone its meeting. I know that Ipswich has considered it, and Burlington has postponed its elections. If such a decision is made here, it will be done after consultation with the select board and the health agent. For now, though, we're still scheduled for a town meeting on April 27th, but stay tuned. Thank you, Alan. All right, so with that, um, I will figuratively hand over the gavel to Bob um, to thank lead you. us in the reorganization. Uh, thank you. I just want to make sure our remote participants are uh, okay with the volume. Uh, this is Ann. This yes. works fine for me. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This is Karen. I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Um, we can do this two ways. I'm happy to help. I can do all the nominations or I can just do the chair nomination and then the chair can take over, so we'll get to that. Uh, but first I'd like to open the floor for nominations for chair of the select board for a term ending until the next election, about one year. Are there any such nominations? Hi, this is Ann Landry and I would like to nominate Mark Doxer as chair of the select board. Um, okay. Should I give some remarks as to why I think uh, I'd like to nominate Mark or? Certainly welcome. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I, I am confident that Mark will bring a steady hand to the leadership of the select board um, as we are facing an unprecedented time uh, in our town, our, our Commonwealth and our country. Uh, I think Mark is really willing to listen to all stakeholders in our community. And he is committed like I am to closing the loop with residents and to working to keep our board accountable to residents as well as to the goals we set for ourselves. I've also had the good fortune to serve on a committee previously with Mark as chair um, when we previously served together on the finance committee. I know that he runs a good meeting and I have complete confidence in him. Okay, thank you, Ann. Uh, are there any no other nominations for the position of chair of the select board? Looks like you might be stuck, Mark. 
We'll let them go first. Or um, <laughs> any other nominations? I like to. Does, does Mark does Mark accept the nomination? I probably should have. No, we're not going to ask him that. <laughs> uh, are there any other yeah. no nominations for chair from anyone? I would like to nominate Ann Landry as chair. Okay. Any particular comments, Carlo? I think she'd do a great job. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations for chair of the select board? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to ask nominations be closed. Um, now, it, it's a little bit awkward because we have to do a roll call vote for this. Normally, it's a show of hands. Um, I'll just uh, shout out names in the order I, I think of them. Um, Would it be all right for me to just respond to Carlo's nomination? Um, certainly. I, I just wanted to say thank you so much to Carlo um, for that nomination. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, and I regret that I'm not physically present tonight um, in the sense that I would have in ordinary circumstances wanted to congratulate both Carlo and Karen in person. Um, and I, I very much appreciate that um, kind of vote of confidence that Carlo just um, just made. Uh, I think in terms of my own uh, personal capacity at this time with my work and family obligations, um, it, it doesn't make sense for me to take on that responsibility at this time, but I very much appreciate um, that recommendation. Okay, thanks, you, man. You're welcome. Um, that being said, um, I will just kind of go through a list. Um, all those, <laughs> we only have Mark Doxer, but um, all those in favor of Mark Doxer, uh, please respond with an aye. I'll start with Karen. This is Karen Herrick, aye. Mark? Aye. Ann? Aye. Carlo? Uh, yeah, you're, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, nay. It's being four to one. Mark, you're now chair. Mark, do you want to take over? Um, if that's all right, can folks hear me clearly? Does that work? Yeah. Yeah, near you. Yeah. Great, great. Well, well, thank you, folks. Um, I very much uh, look forward to uh, to working very closely with all. Um, I would open the floor now for nominations for vice chair of the board. I would nominate Ann Lander as vice chair. Any comments, Vanessa, you want to make with it as well? Um, I think uh, having served with Anne on the Finance Committee, I think this would be a good role for her. Um, she lends a balanced perspective, and I think she would um, do well if the need were to arise um, for her to step into the chair role. Thank you. Thank you. I am willing to accept that nomination. Thank you. Great. All right, there are there other nominations for the position of vice chair of the board? No. None in the room, Mark. Okay, so let so let close the nominations and move to a vote and move to a uh, a roll call. Um, so I'm going to go in alphabetical order, if that's all right. Anne? Yes. Aye. Carlo? Aye. Karen? Aye. Vanessa? Aye. And Mark votes aye as well. Congratulations. Anne? Thank you. Vice Chair. Uh, let's open the nominations for position of secretary of the board. This is Anne. Uh, I would like to nominate Carlo Bacci as secretary if he is so interested. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I, so that means you are interested? Yes. Yes, yes. He looks eager. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm watching on uh, the live stream and the, the sound is, and live stream yes. parts are uh, connected. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I said yes. Yeah, Carla would accept your nomination. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think Ann had some comments as well. 
Sure. Carl, I don't, we haven't had the chance to talk about this given open meeting law constraints, but um, I know he spent a lot of time speaking with residents over the past few months and have um, your ear to, to the ground there. Um, and I, I'm not sure if you're totally familiar with the responsibilities, but it's you would end up, at least under our current operations, um, be responsible for responding to all residents who uh, reach out to the board with a with a timely response from the board. Um, and I know that you care about resident response, and so I thought that might potentially be a good good role for you. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Are there other nominations for secretary? Hearing none, let's close the, the nominations um, and move to a vote uh, for Carlo. We'll go again in alphabetical order. Anne? Aye. Make sure, because now you have to read these. Carlo? Aye. Karen? Aye. Vanessa? Aye. And Mark votes aye. So we now have a secretary. So congratulations, Carlo. <laughs> um, we'll have some things for you to do this evening, definitely. Oh, let's go from there. Um, so let's um, let's move ahead a little bit on the on the agenda. I'd like to make um, just a couple of quick comments, if I could, um, up front. Um, and then, um, although I didn't think that there, there would be liaison reports, um, Anne mentioned that she actually would like to uh, talk a little bit uh, about the ad hoc committee, and perhaps it's worth spending just one minute talking about an RMLD update, with, which I would do. So let me let me start with some just some quick comments. So first of all, welcome to all members. Uh, welcome to remote participation. Uh, sorry that I'm not there, but I think you'll all appreciate that I'm not. So uh, I think that's how we start. Um, obviously, we're in very unprecedented time. Board of Health is offering guidance on what we should and should not do pretty much daily. I think we're very fortunate to have this expertise in town. And they, along with all of the town staff, are literally working their butts off. And it's very much appreciated. I think it's very important that we work together as a community. The staff and boards are working in lockstep to protect and inform the citizens of the town. I think it's very important that we help out our neighbors who may need extra help. And Bob mentioned that the town has and needs a strong volunteer network. Obviously, 911 is the right place for emergencies, but Matt Cronellis is the point person for, for non-emergencies. And as the systems uh, that Bob and, and staff are working on are, are further developed, then we'll have further updates to share with all. I think in the short term, and Vanessa mentioned this, boards and committee meetings uh, are <laughs> probably mostly will be non-meetings for a bit to protect our volunteers and our residents. We're working toward uh, a new way to have meetings during this crisis. Uh, I've been in touch with uh, both Bob and Phil over at RCTV. RCTV is very willing to support this so that we can build in a, a, a good opportunity for communi community participation, um, and that's coming. As far as the board is concerned, I think uh, very simply, we need to focus on uh, how to both build and rebuild community. I'm very excited that Anne has decided to accept the role as vice chair of the board. I think that she will be exceptional at working uh, at this activity for us um, and to get the, the, the trust uh, back to the level that, uh, that we want and need think we can use to support the town. Beyond that, I think we want to be supporting the operations of the town and working together to support our residents. Uh, so with that, uh, let's shift to um, Anne, if you would like to talk a little bit about uh, your liaison report on the ad hoc uh, human relations uh, committee discussion. Certainly. I will be exceedingly brief so that everyone can get out of there. Uh, quickly tonight. Um, so I did bring, um, as we discussed at our meeting on February 11th, um, the recommendation of the ad hoc committee to the Board of Library Trustees. They have asked that I go back to the ad hoc committee um, and ask uh, for and they have asked the ad hoc committee committee to provide a more developed proposal um, as one that will kind of flesh out some of the um, structure and mission 
of the proposed organization, as well as to respond to some of the concerns and questions that residents raised uh, in person at the meeting uh, of the library board. Uh, so I would hope that in a, at an upcoming agenda, we could put that um, on as an agenda item because we'll need to actually have some new membership as um, given the most recent election cycle, we no longer have a quorum of individuals um, on the committee. Gotcha. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Pat. So maybe we can uh, make, to set that for one of our next meetings to put that onto the agenda. Right. And you'll, you'll need uh, the school committee and library trustees to chime in. Oh, right. Oh, right. Just in case, I mean, yep. library may just keep Andrew, but schools will want to add some. Right, right. And I can, if it sounds good to the board, I can reach out um, on behalf of the board to the school committee and the library board to confirm who they might want to recommend. And then um, whenever we get it on, on a future agenda, we could have um, those names to vote on. Gotcha. I could then very briefly on uh, RMLD, um, the Citizens Advisory Board uh, reviewed proposals. Uh, the Select Board, if you will remember from uh, our last meeting, sent over uh, some ideas for them to, to work with. Um, the feedback was that they prefer using uh, some type of kilowatt hours as the, the basis of, of changes in the payment to the Town of Reading as opposed to revenues. They are going to be uh, a meeting on Thursday night. I believe the commissioners are still planning to meet where they'll be reviewing some proposals, um, which I believe will just be a discussion at this point. Um, so that's that's the latest update from them. Any, anything else on liaisons or are we covered for now? Mark, can I ask you a question? Will that lead to uh, like a more formal report to the board, you think? Yes. Uh, so, sorry, to the select board or to the to the commissioners? Well, uh, I guess both, but in in order, whatever. Right. So the commissioners will be um, reviewing uh, the feedback, and I believe that they're meeting this Thursday. They plan to discuss how to move ahead. I don't know whether or not they plan a vote. Um, I, I have not looked at their uh, their agenda um, for the meeting that's coming, but I, I have a feeling that it's it's discussion at this point. Um, and then the next step from there is they would take a vote and would uh, come back uh, the select board with obviously what, what the results are. One of the things we'll need to do is set up our liaisons and decide uh, who should be you know, working closely with the RMLD commissioners uh, and ideally attending the meetings. Um, interestingly, Karen was the representative from FinCom. Uh, and uh, both Vanessa and I were, were representatives from the select board. So we'll, we'll need to, in, in pretty short order, decide who should continue uh, to go to those meetings or if we need reps there. In fact, that may be something we want to decide tonight. Thanks. Sure. Um, OK, so why don't we move ahead? The next thing on the agenda uh, would be the appointment of the town accountant. And we want to make sure that we're doing this tonight because the deadline is March 31st. And depending on when our next meeting does or doesn't take place, it seems very prudent to accomplish that tonight. Bob, do you want to pick up? Uh, don't let her escape. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's in the very trying. <laughs> Carlo's ready with a motion. I'm ready. Uh, move to appoint Sharon Angstrom to town accountant for a term ending March 31st, 2021. Second. For a second? Yeah, Vanessa. Thank did. you, Vanessa. Any further discussion? She's terrific. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yes. She really I, is. I would reiterate that also. This strong, is a very strong, easy strong item. Support. Okay, we're ready for a vote then. All right, Ann? Aye. Carlo? Aye. Karen? Aye. Vanessa? Aye. And Mark, aye. Five zero. Congratulations, you. Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the approval of a class two license application. Yep. Right. And uh, I'll just quickly describe it as um, about an hour ago, I asked the applicant not to come at your request. Um, I have his phone number if the board has any questions. 
Um, it's a fairly simple and straightforward application for a used car license um, at Minot Street. And uh, the police department reviewed this uh, request almost a month ago and had no questions and no concerns. This license um, would, would therefore be granted until the end of the year and then needs to be renewed. Any questions from the board? No. No. Sometimes we have restrictions, suggestions. We don't in this case. Um, again, sometimes there's a situation with a neighbor or someone else where something came up. In this case, we've got the motion listed with restrictions, but we don't have any to offer to you. Great. I look at the, um, the, the reference section 3.4 on the issuance of these motor vehicle licenses. And Rob, as you mentioned, it, it sounds like uh, they're done on a case-by-case -case basis and right. where uh, everything is checked off in terms of police and other activities if there aren't other objections from neighbors or others they typically would just move forward correct any other questions from the board no 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 okay let's move to a vote again everything in roll call so Ann. <clears throat> wait a minute I have to I, motion. I have to do it oh, oh yeah <laughs> okay Move to approve the Class Two license for Auto Lux LLC at Four Minot Street, Reading, Mass, with the following restrictions. Second. Do we have a second? Vanessa, Next, second. Vanessa. Second. All right. Uh, let's move to a roll call then. Ann. Aye. Carlo. Aye. Karen. Aye. Aye. And Mark votes aye. So five zero. Thank you. All right, let's move to our next uh, agenda item, which is art boxes in the downtown area. Um, you asked um, to skip that, so there's information in your packet. The board didn't require a vote. It was just for information. Um, the Historical Commission and staff have been working on uh, a program to beautify the downtown. Uh, honestly, I don't know exactly what their plans are compared to two or three weeks ago. Uh, but this was just to provide the community and the board information should suddenly a lot of art spring up downtown, which would certainly be most welcome in many ways. Uh -huh. So you weren't required to I vote, it was just information and it's in your packet. Great. I've seen a few examples of this and it mm -hmm. really makes a difference. It really tremendous. Uh, so very much in favor. Yeah, it does. It looks nice. Yeah, it looks really know. nice. I'm just putting some images up now, some of the locations they had in mind right around town hall out on the common um, certainly can make a big improvement this is karen um i was excited to see these um art oddly ugly boxes and it's wonderful to hear that the historical commission as well mm -hmm. excellent uh, all right so let's move on to accepting gifts from the reading little league uh, at the hot snack shack bathroom or for the hot snack shack bathroom and renovated dugouts um, if you don't mind. Sure. Thanks, Mark. So um, last week at the Recreation Committee meeting on March 11th, the Reading Little League uh, Baseball presented um, major improvements in the form of gifts to Hunt Park and Majors Field. Uh, so at Hunt Park, uh, the proposed gift is to convert a closet that is currently part of the snack shack um, into a bathroom. They had previously uh, gifted the town with porta potties in the area, but they weren't working well due to the proximity to a butters and there's limited space um, for anyone who's familiar with the field. Um, and so this will create a permanent bathroom that will be both constructed and maintained by Reading Little League Baseball. Um, in addition at Hunt Park, they are going, there's going to be replacements of the dugouts, uh, or at least for, um, improving uh, higher fences and adding roofs to the dugouts. Um, so this is a nice improvement there. Um, also at Hunt Park, there's, they are gifting the town a rebuilt infield, uh, which means they'll be pre pre uh, repairing the lip and the dip in the clays at home plate, as well as addressing some drainage concerns um, in the infield and at the dugouts. Um, at Majors Field, they will be making the same 
or pairs to the dugouts as at Hunt Park, which is uh, fencing and roofing. Um, but that gift uh, has been recommended to be pending completion of the Birch Meadow Master Plan and review and approval by town staff. Um, so this had um, their initial desire was to complete this by the end of April, uh, given everything else that's going on that date is to be determined. But the idea with presenting it here for approval is that as soon as we return to business as usual, they're able to implement these improvements um, and have them ready for the kids as soon as possible. It's a tremendously generous gift by Reading Little League Baseball. They have made wonderful improvements to our baseball fields over the years. Um, once they um, have, if, if assuming we approve these, which I hope we do, um, they're happy to come back and give us a presentation to show the improvements and what the fields look like before and after. Uh, we're very fortunate to have them as an organization that, that helps support our athletics. So um, I would encourage everyone to support the gift. I agree, yes. <clears throat> awesome. Any other comments from the board or questions? I'm good. Karen, Ann? I'm all set. Sounds good to me. Okay. Are we ready for a motion then? Sure. Move to accept the following. Please. Oh, sorry. Uh, move to accept the following gifts from Redding, Redding Little League Baseball Hunt Snack Shack Bathroom Improvement, uh, Target Completion Date to be Determined. Uh, Renovate the dugouts at Hunt Memorial Field. Again, late April, but to be determined. And do I mention the stuff that you mentioned, Vanessa, that yeah, got added on? Yeah, it has to be a part of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to rebuild uh, the infield and to put um, a higher fencing um, with a lip at uh, Hunt Field. And uh, at a later date, uh, at Majors Field, to put um, high fencing with the roof. Uh, based on approval of the Birch Meadow Complex and funding, I guess. Second. Thanks, Vanessa. Any further discussion for the board? As I'm not hearing any, let's take a vote. Ann? Aye. Carlo? Aye. Karen? Aye. Vanessa? Aye. And Mark votes aye, so 5-0. Thank you very much. That's uh, those are great gifts to the to the town and to Little League Baseball. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have a few minutes before eight o'clock when we are uh, scheduled to to reopen the hearing. Um, maybe what we could do is talk a little bit about uh, liaison roles uh, as part of the discussion, which is actually a, a kind of a, a the nine thirty spot on our our note here. But I think that. Uh, Couple things. One is perhaps we could talk about uh, liaisons to our and the Board of Health, as those are uh, very imminent in terms of timing. Um, and then a second item that we probably should talk about is how we want to think about liaisons forward. I think it's a there's a longer discussion of how we should figure out how we'll all work together on that. I think that in the past there's been discussion that. Having 13 or 14 assignments each has been very difficult to, to manage for all of us. Uh, again, I think that's a longer discussion that we ought to have. Um, but perhaps we could do two things here. One is maybe each board member can uh, send to Bob um, their top, let's say, three, three priorities, uh, where they would like to, to serve as liaison. Um, and maybe we can use that kind of as a starting point for things, and then we can come back to the discussion at our next meeting. But I would suggest that for the Board of Health and for the RMLD, um, we either uh, continue, in the case of the RMLD, the, the current liaisons or, or change them. And for the Board of Health, it probably would be great to have a single point of contact uh, if there are any questions or issues and opportunities to be helpful. Um, let, me, let me stop and ask if the Board has any comments on those thoughts. Um, with regard to sending our top three. Uh, I'm just wondering if, if instead of sort of saying, you know, well, I'm interested in the Conservation Commission, and you're interested in um, 
the Finance Committee. What if we did exactly what you were first proposing, which is where there are needs for us to respond to something that is current, we designate liaison. So where there's an ongoing um, crisis, um, you know, having a Board of Health liaison who is active makes sense, where we have a real payment question and concern with RMLD, it makes sense to have a, have a liaison, but we don't necessarily have to assign a liaison to every single board, commission, and committee in town, um, unless we did so as a way to say we are a resource to the board's commissions and committees um, versus we have a, a proactive role in reaching out to them. Let me, and I, uh, I think that that's a great idea. I think that um, as part of our bigger discussion, I think we want to talk about how to create two-way communication. I think in the past it was very much one way, meaning the board was trying to reach out to everybody um, and, and attend lots and lots of meetings. The idea of two-way communication would be wonderful, and where there are specific needs, and we've identified two of them to start, Board of Health and, and RMLD, uh, we, we kind of grab those uh, clearly. Um, my thought had been that it might still make sense to um, ha have people um, with kind of liaison responsibilities to reach out to the boards um, and form a relationship perhaps with the chair and just have a, that two-way communication, have the possibility of opening that up. Uh, I think that that may be easier than just saying to, to all the boards and commissions, hey, you know, come talk to us when you want to. I think it might be easier to have it a little bit more personal, but not nearly as strong as I think we had it set up before. Mark, this is Bob, if I might. <clears throat> um, the, board had, the board had discussed recently with some of the ups and downs um, of communication that you shift to a one liaison per topic setup, and then any second member of the board can always attend a meeting. But there's no inference that by creating two people as a liaison or an ad hoc committee or anything else that it's a body that has to be posted. And that way, the one liaison can talk to other members of the board as well. So I just wanted You're to just on. remind you of that discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I think we, we, uh, we learned that we, we made things very complex when we had more than one person serving as a formal liaison. Um, or particularly when we formed subcommittees right. versus assigned liaisons. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so, for the Board of Health, was Andy the liaison before? Andy and I were both were two liaisons. Ah. So I, I have actually continued to be in touch with Emmy, um, at the Board of Emmy Dub, the Board of Health Chair, um, in the past in the past few weeks. Would it make sense to continue that? I, I am fine with that. How do other members feel? I'm fine with that. That works for me. I'm fine. Oh? I'm fine. Thank yeah, you. I'm yep. fine with that, too. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that allows for continuity. I think that's a great idea, so thank you, Ann, for okay. that. Certainly. Um, how about in terms of RMLD? Is, you know, Vanessa or, or Karen uh, or I, I guess, would, would be possibilities. Um, does someone want to, to uh, kind of continue that activity and, and, and be kind of the single point of contact for now? Um, I've been the contact now for a couple of years, so I'm happy to continue that if the board is amenable. I'm amenable. Excuse me, has has it been? Has yeah, it, I'm very has, supportive. Sorry, has it been two people, or was it what was it? It was mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Last year, it was this past year. It, has, it was me and Mark. Okay, you, you had a subcommittee as well as there was a liaison. Right, so we dissolved the did we Did we disband the, the subcommittee? Yes, you did. We did, um, and that was disbanded because it didn't, the subcommittee couldn't actually do anything. Okay. Um, the mm -hmm. liaisons actually had a stronger role, um, so we kept it as such, uh, and then we've alternated going to meetings as we can. Um, but is it a bigger commitment for one person in the in the immediate future? That's all I'm um, they asking. They only have monthly meetings, okay. so I'd be inclined to say no. Okay. Um, 
No, that, that's, that's fine. That, I'm just, yeah, just, I'm going from two pe two person to one is is great to have that more personal relationship. But yeah. I think uh, given what's going on with RMLD and the Board of Health, it, it's mm -hmm. great to have one person. Yeah, I think I think that works. I, I'm not very comfortable with Vanessa serving in that role as well. Thank you. Sense of the board, I think we're okay with that. Y yes, I am. Great, great. Okay, why don't we do that? Um, are you folks okay with uh, continuing this liaison discussion in, in a bit more depth? Um, it, it sounds like we're actually feeling pretty good about this idea of one person. I think the, the discussion could continue in terms of how we reach out to the boards and committees and how we work with them. Um, and again, I think it's not a five or ten minute discussion. I think it merits more time than that. So I, I would suggest we push that to the next meeting. If that's all right. Agreed. Uh, I agree. Agreed. I agree. Super. Um, we're still a few minutes before eight. It's, um, it's okay should we, if it's we'll okay start early, Mark. You're just oh, it is. yeah. You're continuing a hearing, so really, it's, it's okay, and you're not taking any substantial business uh, or actions, right? Oh. So it's it's fine to just go right into the hearing. Mark, would it be possible yeah. to uh, make a point of personal privilege just before we uh, enter our last agenda item? Please. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to Vanessa, as this was her last. Um, her last, at least for, for the time being, her last meeting as chair. Um, I know that she's put in countless hours, blood, sweat, and tears and time away uh, for her family and her service to the board as chair. So I just wanted to take this moment to acknowledge Vanessa's service. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. You're here. Absolutely. It's a very strong thank you for your, your guidance and second leadership. Personal <laughs> Very tough job. Did you want to talk further, Karen? No, I, I, I also want to thank Vanessa for all of her tireless service. And um, I also want to uh, point out at the moment, thank you to RCTV, because I have been able to follow along. Again, there's a little lag, but it, it helps this remote uh, business um, go along more smoothly. But thank you, Vanessa. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Um, so why don't we, you need to, uh, Bob, formally reopen the hearing with a um, vote or no, just no you just don't and and if you will i'll just quickly describe the business in front of the board um you know Please. i think we we agreed uh, not to really take significant steps where the public really shouldn't be here tonight although there is one member of stalwart sitting here um there was two things that uh, were essential to do uh, in our view and staff's view um, the first one is, in, is listed in two motions to continue a six-month program that the board had authorized previously. So the board in the fall authorized a January 1st to June 30th uh, program, a sticker, anticipating that there would be some changes. We're now asking you just to extend that to July 1st through December 31st. Um, and and those, those, there's two motions, but it's the same concept. It's the exact same language as what the board used in the fall just again, to allow us to reissue permits for those last six months. And then the second concept, if you will, is simply to move the hearing, to continue the hearing to April 14th at 8 p.m. Um, that, that seems like a much safer time than March 31st. And if for some reason the board cannot meet uh, remotely or otherwise at that point, um, lo uh, open meeting law allows just one person, be it remote or in present, to just uh, continue the hearing again to another date certain. Um, but it, it seemed prudent to pick uh, April 14th at this point. So that's that's all I have for introduction. You did see in your packet, um, staff, especially Julie, did a terrific job boiling down a lot of things. Um, we also thought it most appropriate with two new board members that staff needs to spend some time and talk to them about it. We know you've been watching, uh, but really some one-on-one -on -one contact with staff would probably be very, very, very beneficial for you. So. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I read it over in a lot of the comments that were between the tin bucket meeting and other meetings, and I know it's a, a moving ball, but uh, Julie and the staff and everyone's done a great job. Yeah, thank you. So uh, does the board feel generally comfortable with uh, kind of continuing the policy for another six months uh, at a starting point, and then that allows us to have um, the, the public hearing that we would really want to to have some more discussion. Does that make sense to all? I think so. 
given the circumstances. And, and this doesn't preclude the board from doing other things on April 14th, if it's possible. Um, you know, we, we, this is the safest, safest thing to do, in my view and staff's view at this point. I think the work has been exceptional, and I think we should support how they're approaching it. And if they feel that this is uh, the best approach at this point, given our unfortunate delays, then I'm supportive of it. I agree. I echo that. Karen, anything on your side? No, I'm, I'm in agreement. Thank you. Okay. Carlo, could you uh, read just the one motion at a time, please. Am I, oh, so I'm reading them all or just move to move yes, it? Yes, all of them. All of them, okay. Move that the select board authorize the town manager or designee to sell employee parking stickers, downtown business district as described in sections 5.2.1 of the traffic rules and regulations, but that the term be for six months effective July 1st, 2020, with a cost of $20 per month paid up front. Second motion, move that the select board authorize the town manager or designee to sell lease parking program for merchants and employees permits as described in section 5.14 of the traffic rules and regulations, but that the term be for six months effective July 1st, 2020, with the cost of $30 per space per month paid up front, or $25 per tandem space per month paid up front. You can just stop there. Oh, okay. Then the last motion can be separate. Oh, so None for me. None. No comment. Okay, let's move forward to, to a vote. Can, Bob, can we vote on them together or do we need to separate? Certainly, you can do them together. Okay, so this is to vote for those, the two motions that Carl just read together. So, uh, alphabetical order again. Ann? Aye. Carlo? Aye. Karen? Aye to both motions. Vanessa? Aye. And Mark votes aye as well. So five zero for, for both. Uh, any other court we have a motion to continue the hearing? Yeah. You can no, I'm good. Yep. Move to continue the okay. hearing. No further comment. Sorry, oh sorry. No further comment, I don't think. No, yeah. sorry. Please go ahead. Move to continue the hearing to April fourteenth, twenty twenty at eight PM. Second. Thank you, Vanessa. Any further comments? No. All right. No comment. Nope. Let's move the vote. Ann? Aye. Carlo? Aye. Karen? Aye. Vanessa? Aye. And Mark votes aye. A five zero. Uh, so, let's see. So board, we have you, the, you certainly don't have to do minutes tonight if you're not comfortable. But if you have uh, no, no the, amendments, you could certainly do them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there aren't any major amendments, I'd love to just get this out of the way if we can. I've, I've gone through. I don't have any amendments. Okay. Um, other, others to have comments? Um, I just have a point of information. So in, um, for the two members that didn't participate in those minutes, do we just accept them or do we recuse ourselves? Um, technically, you're allowed to vote on them if you want to. Um, you don't have to vote, but you're allowed to. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, you can also abstain uh, yeah. as long as there's three votes to approve. Um, and could you just give me one minute? I was wondering if you could give me a minute to just look look over them briefly, since we previously mentioned we were going to go through the agenda through 8 p.m. I didn't actually review them closely. One moment. So, and I'll tell you what. Why don't we just stop? Let's. I, I okay. think it's fine to stop at 8 o'clock instead of asking you to do that now. Um, okay. Bring that up at our at our next meeting. Yeah. That's um. I think that's fine. So. Um, if it works for everyone, I think we'll, you know, I would ask if there's nothing else to bring up now, any other topics you'd like to have on the next agenda? So, Ann, you mentioned um, uh, possibly a discussion related to the ad hoc committee and, and membership. Um, we'll probably have an RMLD uh, activity also. 
other are other things we that we should step on that agenda? Is our next meeting a board retreat, even though it would, it would by necessity be a remote retreat, no doubt, but for a conversation about goal setting, um, creating processes for us to hold ourselves accountable uh, to our own work and to residents, um, as well as I think policies and protocols for how we interact with each other. Um, I can answer that. I talked to Mark and Vanessa in, in okay. intermittently. And um, I think we all agreed, and certainly speak up, that the new members needed a little more background, that they should meet mm -hmm. with Jane especially, and maybe myself, and really thoroughly okay. go over what you had at the other meeting. Um, okay. Jane purposely has not completed minutes yet. They're actually complex, and, and I'll help her. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Uh, but I, okay. think, I think, again, a sit down with one or two of the members, either, either singly or, or together, would be very helpful for them. Okay. Before the board even schedules uh, the next step. I agree. Okay. I would also have, given everything that the, the other obligations that the staff has right now, while I think that mm -hmm. meeting is important, mm -hmm. I think that the staff is, um, that their time is better spent elsewhere at the moment. So I would suggest holding until we are in a slightly better place town wide. Nationwide. And face to face. That is right. I, I just don't want to put off, um, put those conversations off indefinitely. Um, so perhaps we can revisit that at our next meeting. Uh, when we can. That sounds great. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think this is, we, given the circumstances at hand, we have to do the best we can uh, remotely, but a, a lot of. Um, what we can do is best to serve the community is in person, uh, all five of us, as, 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 as much as possible. But I know these are different circumstances that we're dealing with for the next several weeks. Could be longer, right. um, hopefully not. But. Okay. Do we have our next meeting um, in mind when that would be? I would suggest April 14th. Which is when so, you but we're scheduled, right? Sorry, go ahead. No, that's just when you deferred the parking meeting. Um, mm -hmm, if, it's, mm -hmm. if it's technically or otherwise possible to meet on March 31st, I'll certainly be in touch with the chair and the vice chair. I just don't want okay. to. I just don't want to promise that. Um, you sure. Know, this has really worked out well tonight, um, but the, mm -hmm. the missing part, which Mark is working through RCTV and I'm working through our technology, is how the audience can participate. Okay. That's a fair point. So let's see if we can make uh, a lot of progress on those fronts. We'll we'll use yes. April 14th as uh, a very hopeful date, and if it's possible to do it for March 31st, perhaps we can we can yep. target that. Um, and let's see kind of how things pan out in the next week or so. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other things that we would like to talk through this evening or anything for the agenda at the next meeting? No. Not at this time, Mark, but I, can I make a comment about the small business community? Is that possible? Yes, please. Um, as many of you watching or here in the audience, um, uh, this is devastating, um, not only to small businesses, but to big businesses as well. Big businesses as well that supply small businesses, whether it's through supplies, ingredients, or, or whatever. And um, I, as I walked here, I'm very close, as I walked uptown tonight, it was a weird feeling seeing storefronts closed, um, different hours. Um, and it's, it's, it's very hard to uh, watch. Um, I have a lot of friends who are self-employed that are resi Reading residents and non-Reading residents. But, and the community outreach has been overwhelming to a lot of the small businesses in town for curbside pickup that. So that can only go so far. I mean, Biltmore and Maine decided to close. Um, a lot of businesses mm. are cutting back their hours, uh, cutting back their staff. A lot of people have lost their jobs. And this goes beyond the small business community. This goes on to the entire workforce. Um, but in the, right. small, in the small business community, uh, that's how we feed our families uh, for, the, for the most part. And not to say we, some of us can't collect unemployment or other means, but the longer this goes, the harder it's going to get. So 
What I've seen on social media has been nothing but positive, um, from residents uh, to the volunteering to encouraging to shop local and just support as many businesses as you can. And I know it's a very anxious and a stressful time right now. Um, I know I've changed my behavior. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have changed our behavior drastically. But I think as much as we can do, um, as you feel comfortable, to support your favorite store, whether it's in town or not in town, uh, would greatly be appreciated. And I know uh, this may get a little tougher before it gets better. Um, but um, we just all do our best. I know the small business owners are, are doing great. I have some friends who are in the food business who are donating to school lunches um, out of their own pocket. Uh, and they're accepting donations. So a lot of people are doing a lot of good, uh, which is great. And I, I know this town, um, between campaigning and post-campaigning and getting elected, um, people really want to support the town. And it's come through, uh, especially in these past several weeks. But I just hope we can I'll do our best as, uh, as best we feel comfortable. I, I'd just like to echo that um, as staff, we're seeing the best of people in many ways. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's sad that it takes a situation like this to bring that out. Um, I, as I drove to work, I listened to WBZAM, which I haven't done in many years. And I heard that someone uh, started a fund to help those disenfranchised by the virus, whatever that means. And in the first day, they raised $10 million in the Boston area. So that just goes to show you there's a lot of people willing to help. And uh, I mentioned the Facebook page earlier. I didn't mention this as a goal, but our economic development director has been sending a lot of stuff through the Chamber of Commerce of how to support small business. There's some new legislation, be it for unemployment for those displaced workers or small business loans for the middle-sized companies. I think it's 50 employees or smaller. And that's part of what we will publish on the website is assistance for businesses, especially small businesses as well. Thank you. Great. I'd actually like to add something, Carla. Thank you so much for bringing this up. Um, one of the things I've seen on social media go around is uh, if you would like to support your local businesses, one of the things you can do is buy gift certificates. Many of them offer them. Um, it's providing cash to them up front so that they can get through these difficult times. Um, I've done it locally and, and um, outside of town as well. Um, so get a gift certificate and make sure we frequent them um, often when they open up again. Thanks. Yeah, I agree. That's it. Excellent idea. I think that I saw that the uh, the chamber was publishing a list of a number of the businesses that um, are, are open and a little bit more about hours and activities. Um, Carol, you may know uh, more about that also, but that would be great. And I don't know if the town website at some point might be able to, to update some we, of those things also. We'd be thrilled to do that because right now people are calling 911. Uh, oh, no. One of the most common questions the dispatchers are, are getting is, where can I go get takeout? <laughs> and the police department's not really the right place to be asking that question. So no. yes, we'd be thrilled to get any kind of information to provide to the town in, in sort of a central location. Yeah, I think that would be great. It's, I think it's being worked on. I know um, Facebook, okay. uh, Michelle Greenwald, and, and some other people are, are doing that. I know Lisa's doing that. but. Yeah, and as, was, as, as Vanessa mentioned before um, in her opening statements, uh, you know, our, our neighbors are a, a, a good resource for a, a favor, going to the store. If you're not comfortable, where should, who's open? Um, like I said, a lot of people are cutting back their hours, either opening early. I know some supermarkets are opening early for 60 years old and older um, to have that, that, that distance and that demographic. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, uh, but, uh, everything is changing by the day and by the hour. Um, you know, I, I'm getting constant updates from a lot of people that I sell to. I don't, know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but stores are closing, um, chains are closing. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a weird time. It's a weird time. And I know we're all experiencing it together. Um, but yeah, I think going to your neighbors, not everyone's on Facebook, not everyone's uh, that right. savvy on, uh, with the internet. So uh, just knocking on a door and say, hey, you know, or, or I know people are offering to get takeout for them. There's, there's so many things, so many nice things going on yeah. in, in town and not just our town, but all across the country and all across the states. But I heard New Jersey is closing their malls um, before I came here throughout the state and Governor Cuomo's considering a, a, a shelter in place. So. Things are moving very fast, and um, we have to deal with our kids that are home. Our college kids are home now. 
So there's a lot to deal with for the parents, um, dealing with our, our, our parents, our elderly parents, or, or whatever it is. But um, I think just going to your neighbor as much as you can and maybe check on them as well and see what they need. We've, we've had an easy way, I think. Yeah, I think uh, that's a good resource, and I highly recommend it. Great. Thank you, everybody. I think that if, if we all can be kind and thoughtful and helpful to one another, uh, that's how we as a community kind of work through this, this situation. We don't know how long it, it will last, uh, but we'll be getting regular updates, uh, which is very helpful. And people should feel free to reach out. They need help. Again, emergency help be through 911, non emergency through uh, Matt Cronellis. You can get through, through the town website. Um, and you can certainly feel free to reach out to, uh, to the board. Uh, as I mentioned, basically through email is probably the best bet for now. We will work towards getting a public participation method for public meetings uh, going forward. And I think that uh, you know, everyone, please stay safe. Uh, be kind, thoughtful, and friendly, and uh, we move from there. Um, Mark, you you mentioned you know email is best for reaching out. Uh, Bob, is there a way for people to call and leave a voicemail, either in the town manager's office or with Matt Cronellis, if they have a non-emergency need um, and could expect a phone call back for residents who are are not online? Um, we think we're going to communicate that in a rather large series of press releases probably early next weekend. Okay. Right now, all, right. all of our phone numbers for various departments are online. Uh, you know, plenty of people leave messages with the town manager's office, for instance, on weekends. Um, mm -hmm. But we'd like to mm -hmm. create a number that can be observed a little more quickly. Uh, not quite 24-7, okay. but it can be more actively monitored, I'll, I guess I'll say, just okay. in case people are leaving rather Great. urgent messages. So that will come out. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other comments from any members? No. No. No, no. Great. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Sure. Motion to adjourn the meeting on March seventeenth, twenty twenty. Second. I'll give you on that one. <laughs> and yeah, I end it. Yep. You still there, Mark? Uh -oh. Mark. <laughs> well, so if there's still three of you, you can still adjourn, and everyone will wonder I what guess, happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess perhaps as vice chair, should I help <laughs> the responsibility of asking for um, for everyone's uh, vote uh, in in the motion to adjourn? Uh, Anne, I. Um, Vanessa. I. Carlo. I. Karen. No. Oh, we lost two of them. It'll, right, it'll be an interesting memento to the minutes. Uh, All right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we are adjourned. All right, thank you. Thank Thanks you. Bob. Thanks, all. Take care. <laughs>